This is the Ryan Marketing Show, and you're listening to episode 46 of 100. Today on the show, I have Al Bori from First Hand Coffee, which is a boutique coffee roaster based in Hawke's Bay. Uh, you're probably more likely to know him from his shipping container turned coffee shop in Clive uh, called The Box, or through Crazy Good in Ahariri. And today, Al, I guess, um, firstly, you know, welcome to the Cheers. show. Oh, been a while coming. It, it has been a while, um, and it's great to actually be at your, your premises where you do the roasting here at first hand. In is this are we in Clive here or Tiawonga or just kind of on the border? How one Clive, but officially Clive. Bit of both. Yeah. Near near to the Black Bridge. Black Bridge. Yeah. Now you've been around in the coffee scene here for a while. So what coming up? Five. Yeah, years? coming up five and a half. We've had our shop. Um, I've been in Hawke's Bay. Seven, eight years nearly. I mean, about eight years. Yeah. So we, um, yeah, I guess born and bred in Hawke's Bay, but we lived about 10, 10 11 years of our life in Auckland. Um, and yeah, so I guess coming back to Hawke's Bay, it was an um, opportunity to do your own thing, I guess, and um, see what Hawke's Bay had to offer and how it's changed over the many years of not being here. So, yeah, so the. So the box was uh, was it for me, and um, yeah, it was where I guess I got my officially uh, hospitality industry start. I guess by myself. So, right, so you weren't yeah. in hospitality in Auckland. I was pre- I was a little bit. I guess um, I mean I'm officially trained as a landscape designer and that sort of thing. So that's where my background lay. Um, that's why your garden looks so yeah, good. Yeah, totally, totally <laughs> exactly, and. Um, so yeah, living in Auckland and working up there, um, that was what I was doing for a bit. And I mean, long story short, I had a bit of an injury and so I was off work for a while um, and basically had nothing to do. So I was hanging out at a friend's cafe in, uh, in Auckland there and basically just helped him in the mornings making a few sandwiches and things like that. And uh, that was it. And then we went back to landscaping again um, and got stuck in the cafe trade. So yeah, I yeah that was that was it for me. Before that, I was wasn't even into coffee, didn't drink it at all, didn't do anything to do with it. Um, but I guess yeah, something I found interesting about the the environment and what goes on and that thought type of thing. And so yeah, just just grew and grew from there. Interesting. So yeah. you're it it was never an intentional decision. And that yeah. injury must have been a blessing in disguise. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> the way. That's the way it works. Eh? So. Yeah, so I mean, I'd never go back to what I was doing before. It's yeah, for me, this is perfect. It's sort of a there's so many different aspects to hospitality that, and especially the coffee industry that that sort of ticks all the boxes for me. Um, yeah, so coming, so I guess coming back down to Hawke's Bay, we sort of my wife as a teacher, so she got a job here, so it was a good excuse for us to yeah lo- relocate back to Hawke's Bay um, unless one of us had a job. So. It was a good chance to do that, and so yeah, I started working for a uh, place in Havelock, um, Boulderson's, which is not there anymore, but um, you might know, some people might know. Um, yeah, so basically just a bit of experience, and it was a job to start with, um, so I was sort of in charge of their coffee, and yeah, looking at that, and I just, yeah, it was a good, it was a, it was a tough, I'd say two and a half years, it was hard going, and um, I mean, I'm not really one to get excited about working for someone else, so I'd really prefer to do my own thing, which, yeah, was was good. I mean, I was sort of left to do my own thing a little bit there. So um, during during that time, were you kind of in the back of your mind planning what you were... Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd started planning it when we were still living in Auckland. Right. That, I mean, I'd looked at opportunities up in Auckland to actually start something up there. And Was the container always in... Uh, was that the format that was always in mind in Auckland? Or not, necess- that- not necessarily. Um, up there, it was... Yeah, I mean... I guess yeah, land land for a container is a lot more restricted up there than it is here. So, um, yeah, so we looked at opt- opportunities up there, and just nothing really was was right at the time. So, um, so yeah, getting the chance to move back down here and do your own thing was probably a better opportunity for me. Um, yeah, so I guess a lot of the a lot of the day to day, I guess, workings and ideas that I've had started up there. Um, a friend that I was working for who I guess had a similar concept of the the very simple coffee to go in and out early morning thing so that's um, 
what his business was built on and he started that in 1999 um so i guess the idea of a a really good coffee shop on a main road, somewhere for people to duck in and out of, um, sort of caught my eye, and it, it really, yeah, made things interesting for me. And so looking, I guess, being in Auckland, looking down to Hawke's Bay, and, you know, there was nothing at all like that. There was, yeah, coffee, oh. cafes were cafes, and that's all they did, and they just said, you know, their coffee, their paninis, their bagels, whatever, some carrot cake and that sort of thing and that was it um so yeah so coming down here and having all these ideas of and then sort of translating to how it would work in Hawke's Bay with the yeah I guess the economy and the yeah I guess the scale of population is very different here um so yeah so having I guess a bit of experience from the Hawke's Bay um and especially in the Havelock area working there I guess you sort of get to know how things work and you get to know the people who I mean, you make contacts and things like that, which has been really good. Um, so that was a good start for me. And then, yeah, that business got sold, so it was sort of a time for me to leave. And and that was it. I sort of got into working on my own thing. Um, I had various spots that I was sort of looking at. Um, I mean, I was specifically looking at Clive, even when we were living in Auckland, that it was sort of a key place to, to do something. Um, right, so you you had already picked that out. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Yeah, I remember um, you know when the the box opened, yeah. I kind of thought on one you know to myself yeah. that you're right next door to a yeah. BP. Yeah, BP's got coffee. Yeah, yeah. You're right down the yeah. road from Bay Espresso on Camry yeah. Road. Yeah, they already do coffee, yeah. and that's they've been around for a long yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you had yeah. to offer something that was more yeah. improved on those two yeah. options. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess um, that's I guess that again that's the risk you take and you've got to sort of weigh up your risks and what you can offer better than someone else, easier, and not necessarily cheaper, but, um, yeah. I guess what I've learned is you've got to, at the end of the day, people are quite lazy. They, like, they just often take the easiest and... Whether option. they even know it or not. Exactly, and that's, that's, that's what they do. And so, you know, going to Bay Espresso, if it takes, you know, an extra 30 seconds to try and cross the road... I'll flag it, I'll drive two minutes down the road, go somewhere else. That's, yeah, that's what uh, life has become, unfortunately, and it sort of gets worse and worse. So, um, yeah, I mean, Clive was sort of ticked the boxes. It was, I mean, Clive was a bit of a nothing town, I guess, back then, and um, it was a place where you drove through between Hastings and Napier. You didn't really stop unless you wanted to get gas at the BP um, and maybe a pie at the dairy, and that was it. So, yeah, it was... It was interesting. I mean, I had so many people that said, yeah, stupid to do it in Clive. Like, there's nothing there. What's... I can imagine. Why would people stop? Yeah. I mean, people, like, really said, like, I really think you need to reconsider it (laughs) because, yeah, it's Clive. That's all right. Um, No one lives in Clive. I mean, you know, there's not the population in Clive to sustain a coffee place like that. But I guess people don't see the big picture of... I mean, you're, I guess it's your target market. So my target market wasn't the actual people living in Clive so much. It was more the people driving through Clive every day, which at the time it was probably the third busiest road in Hawke's Bay. Um, you know, close to 15,000, 20,000 people drive past every day. Um, yeah, so you've got a lot of people living in Hastings, Havelock North. Oh, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And it gets more and more. Um, and so, yeah, so, so targeting that market, but then... I guess the challenge after that is to finding somewhere to do it. And when I approached a couple of the other businesses to see if they'd been interested in selling and so you could use their shop and um, we looked at another piece of land, but that was um, sort of council owned and they weren't really keen on doing it. And so we just happened to see the CP section and yeah, we just sort of, I know it took a while to work out who actually owned it. So we just approached them and said, oh, can we just, I don't know, Read a, piece, a corner of the section because you're not doing any with it. There's nothing on it, so and um, he said, like, "Yeah, yeah, we'll work, work out something." So, so I mean, it was it was worked out really well that it was a a technically a commercial piece of land, so um, that made things a lot easier for us. Um, and I mean, I was probably a little bit naive about how easy it was to sort of get set up. And um, I was going to go through the council <laughs> procedures of you know, it's just a shipping container, you just it down and see the coffee but um yeah the, 
I guess there's probably three, at least three months of planning and council tick offs to get it all legit so we can actually start building it. Um, yeah, I mean, any, any sort of hospitality business that, or any sort of, I guess, food related business that you are trying to set up that's not in an existing building is uh, quite difficult. So there's so many regulations with wheelchair ramps and toilets and hand washing and all those sort of little things that you don't really think about because they're already often in a shop already so um but yeah i mean it was cool it was a really cool learning experience and it's definitely made things easier in the future for um you know for other things so um but yeah i mean again that was when was that 2011 mid 2000 then we finally opened um in june so so it was more than just starting your own business. That, yeah. That's part of it. Yeah, yeah. The second part is yeah. then you're not moving into an existing yeah. building. Yeah. So there's a yeah. there's a whole build process yeah. that had to happen. Yeah, yeah I mean, I enjoy the building side of it as well. And that's it was pretty cool. You know, I worked with a friend and he helped me do that. And um, so it was actually like a, a little project. Yeah, so you're basically building from scratch your shop and your business at the same time so and did you manage yeah. were you able to draw on some of your landscape knowledge or yeah, was yeah, it... oh, yeah definitely yeah I mean I'm always pretty practical and handy with most things I can build anything really so um so that was quite cool and it um yeah now we just sort of yeah do my own fit out and all that sort of thing inside and we just sort of yeah I mean it it costs a lot more than I thought and um I mean people think that you know containers a couple of grand and mm you know, chuck it on the ground and coffee machine and stuff. So like, you know, 10 grand, you can easily do it. Easily, like but, easily. You know, the amount of people that said to me after I opened, oh, that's a good cheap way of doing it, eh? It's, yeah, it's actually way cheaper than going to another shop. But anyway, that's the way it goes. So, but it's, it's sort of created a unique, I guess a unique selling point and a new, unique um, opportunity for us. And so, yes, I mean, I guess we open the doors we didn't really, up to that point, we didn't tell anyone what we are doing. We didn't advertise it or anything. We didn't even have any signs on it. We just, pretty much one day, just opened the doors and see what happened. Wow. And, um, so no pre-launch, no, no launch, at all. no <laughs> social media, no <laughs> digital, no, no advertising. No, yeah, that's the way days before any, any of that sort of thing. Um, what was that like on that first day where you, you, know, you opened it? Oh, it was pouring with rain. It was like middle of winter. It was so dark. Um, <laughs> and so you just standing there. And um, yeah, I mean, it was... It was actually a right day. Like it was, you're surprised how many people. I guess you know the word gets around, and you have a few locals wandering over to see what's going on and things like that. And um, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, the second day was probably slower than the first, but and it's just yeah. From then, it's just built up. Um, we'd never done we'd never done any advertising at all, nothing like that. So it's basically all we've done is relied on word of mouth and people passing by to curious to see what happens. Um, how long has it taken going that route to get to a position where... <coughs> well, I guess the, the point um, would have been when you went to open your, your second yeah. operations. Yeah. How, long, yeah. how long was that until Crazy Good came around? Uh, two and a bit years. Two years. Just, just over two years. Um, yeah, I guess... We, yeah, we built up the business slowly. And, you know, I guess my, my initial goal was to... Um, have a cafe, you know, roast a few of my beans, sell some coffee, and me just work there, and that was it. That was that was as far as my sort of plan reached. And um, so sort of after, I guess, three or four months, I was like, you kind of need to employ someone else because we're getting quite busy. And it's like, I don't really want to have staff or anything like that. So so I had a, a young guy doing, filling in a few days. So that day, we had, at that time, we only worked six days a week, and so I was pretty much doing six days a week. Uh, first two years and had someone else helping out a little bit in the mornings um, after the sort of six months and um, yeah and I guess I guess that moves on to yeah just sort of slowly building your business I mean we a lot of business I guess you can do a big you know hula to start with and get all these huge crowds of people but if you're not you know got something to sort of engage them and carry that momentum on it can fade down quite quickly so so my, yeah, my goal to start with was just to slowly build it up. I mean, I know it was going to be a lot slower to start with because you don't get the the word out there that blah, 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 it's copy, 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 that sort of thing. But 
we just really wanted to build it on word of mouth and the quality of our product that we sell and um, for me that pro provides sort of a longer a longer um, yeah base and I guess yeah it just helps the, the overall longevity of the business it's not a sort of a quickly here's coffee and then fade away into nothing else and when the next it's coffee true. Shows, it's up down the road so if you can last it that period of time yeah. that, that sustainable way of organic growth um, yeah. can be really long term yeah. yeah and uh, I think you know, going into your your um, shop in the early days yeah. having you as the yeah. the front person yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know how you did it you were there yeah. six days yeah, yeah. every yeah. week so you, you've managed to create that yeah. bond yeah, yeah. Um, with quite a lot of people in that commute about yeah I guess I mean and that's I guess again that was part of being in a small community of Clive that you sort of get to know everyone there you're the face of the business every day um so you know, you know what everyone has, what every coffee has, you know what most people do for a job, that sort of thing. So it's like a huge base of contacts and people that you know just by seeing them for a minute every morning, that type of thing. So yeah, it's quite an interesting and unique sort of uh, proposition to be in. So um, sort of get a glimpse into so many people's lives. Um, and I guess... Yeah, there should, I mean, I guess the, the struggle with a lot of businesses is how do you transition from you being the face of the business to employing people and they become, you know, equal with you in a way and then then eventually then overtaking you and you sort of, I, not fade out in the distance, but, you know, you're less of an important person in the business. Um, so that, that's a good point, I think, to yeah. talk through here because... Some of those I've interviewed are, are only the business yeah, operators, yeah, yeah. you know, operating the business, yeah. uh, and then others, are the owner of the business, yeah. employing a number yeah. of other people. Yeah. What was that transition like? I guess, the, and the point would have been that second cafe where you couldn't be two places at once. Yeah, exactly. And so I made a conversation that, yeah, this is this is a, I mean, basically we got asked about the site in Ahuru by the owner of the building. He was talking to someone else and. And he rang me up and said, oh, I've got the shop. Do you want to come and have a look at it? And I hadn't even thought anything about opening the other shop at all. But I said, oh, yeah, we'll go have a look. And Ahuri, like Main Street Ahuri, it's going to be crazy expensive. I'm never going to... It's not a waste of time, but I'll go have a look. And so I mean, it was a cool little shop. And he sort of, you know, filled me in the details, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, and, I, and it was... I think it was just at the right time. It was quite cool. And I guess our sort of coffee side of it was expanding a bit more and... Um, so it was a really good opportunity to do something different. Um, we sort of consciously made it, I guess, aspects of the box similar, but um, I really wanted it to be its own shop and have its own staff um, and have its own sort of little community in our area. Um, I guess the problem is when you sort of try and replicate what you've done already, and often, you know, you've got totally different staff, you've got a totally different shop, you've got a totally different community around you everything is different so why would your business plan and everything you've done previously be the same so somebody tried to make I've got a good friend of mine that I've known for 20 years and he happened to be in the Hawks Bay as well and he had a cafe in Wanganui that he just sold and so I just asked him do you want to I don't know run a cafe for me and he was like yeah cool so yeah so he's he's pretty much the face of that shop and it looks after like his own shop so um, that's Ryan Huffman. yeah Ryan yeah yeah so most people sort of know him and um, so yeah so the day to day running so I don't yeah, I don't work there at all I don't do anything I just you know they tell me they need something and I take it over and get them supplied and things like that and so they got their own sort of core group of stuff there and I guess I've really made it made it their own they know all their own customers and all that and um, so that sort of basically allows me to sort of have nothing to do with it in a way um, I mean, people know that. I mean, there's still a lot of people that probably wouldn't know that the box and crazy good are, you know, the same in a way, and um, which is good. It's um, you need the business to stand on its own feet and not rely on the. Yeah, I guess rely on the what's come before it or who owns it or that sort of thing. Like it's it could anyone be owning it? It's still going to be just as good um, by itself. So. Yeah, so that was that was cool, and it's it was a cool learning experience again because it was sort of going into sort of a regular shop, and you know, 
you know, other, a lot of other cafes around the area. There's so many places that do coffee over in Ahuru, but we we focused on coffee, bit of pastries, and that's it. And um, didn't see any food really, or um, basically because our coffee side of the business had sort of grown to a point where this sort of became our flagship of you know coffee, coffee knowledge, accessories for home, and basically a full supply of our beans. Um, and it's really good for having a bit more space in a shop, which is where we were limited at box, but um, to sort of expand that range of it as well. So, yeah. Interesting. So the <coughs> the Ahuriri Crazy Goods is it's almost like a brother and sister between with yeah, the, definitely yeah. I mean, they have similarities, but they are very different, and um, yeah, we've tried to keep them separate. Um, yeah, and the way they function, and I mean, they have totally different, I guess, different requirements of the customers as well. I mean, the box is sort of really early morning commuters traffic. Um, that's its main market. Whereas Ahuri, you got, I mean, you got early morning people, but you, I guess, your morning tea, lunchtime type of people um, with all the offices and that sort of thing around. So, so it's sort of making sure you cater to those needs rather than sort of trying to copy something else. Now, the one standard thing across yeah. both of your um, the cafe spots um, and with the roastery, obviously, yeah. is the, the branding yeah. uh, and the packaging of First Hand as a, yeah. as a standalone coffee brand yeah. that can yeah. supply not just your own cafes, yeah. but yeah. other yeah. cafes. Uh, how did you come up with First Hand and, and the branding around it? Well, back, at, back in the day when we started Box, we, you know, I guess I started... I started roasting for myself before we opened the shop just just because I thought it was interesting and I wanted to learn how to do it and um, so I bought a little Tony roaster just to play on and see if it was if it was good and yeah it was cool and you know people started wanting to buy beans and stuff and so I was trying to you know spending a full day you know roasting out a couple of bags with this little machine so so before we opened the shop sort of six months sort of made this just to buy a full proper roaster and um that allowed us to basically supply our shop and that was as full as far as I was going to do it just roast our own beans to supply our shop and that was it so um, and again the, again the, the the branding and the promotion of that is, has all just been done through the shop and by word of mouth like we never advertise that we have coffee or anything like that we don't advertise that we sell wholesale or so it's basically people coming in oh I like your coffee can you know can we get some or whatever like, and it's just sort of grown from there. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I guess the, the first hand brand, I, I mean, back at the time, it was just all under one one banner, and we sort of decided to separate the first hand coffee into its own its own brand. Um, so first hand coffee was born then, and um, I guess he wanted to still keep the real, you know, first hand, like, these are the hands that sort of make the coffee for you. Like, we didn't want to be some sort of, huge corporate, you know, but just, you know, you, you need to know the person who makes your coffee for you, and so I guess that's me or my staff or anything like that, so it's... And it does have that, hand, like, it's hand-stamped, it's hand-stitched. Yeah, stitched, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's, um, back then it was, like, it was really important to, like, we just don't buy another coffee to use, but, you know, the people who actually make your coffee, it's made down this road here by the bridge, so that's why we, a black bridge, that's why our... I guess our signature blend that we've always used. Um, it just gives a bit of personality to where it is, and sort of, I guess that's where we originated it from. So it's, um, yeah, it's quite a unique, unique thing, and it's it made a bit of, um, yeah, it just made things interesting, I guess. And so for the nice. coffee aficionados, the um, Black Bridges, obviously, that's your, you know, your core, yeah, um, yeah. roast. Yeah, yeah. How do you go about keeping refining it without going too far away from where, where it began? Yeah, it's quite funny. Like when we when I started roasting for myself, that um, like as I started roasting a little bit of coffee for myself when I was working at this place in Hamlock, and, and I used to take it in there occasionally because I had no idea what like how to roast coffee. There was no books or anything. The internet was like had nothing about it, so you basically just had to try and error really. So I bought in you know, a few little bags of, of green beans and just to try it out. And so you sort of can work out what sort of works together. And um, so, I, so I took some into work and, it, you know, 
I didn't have a copy machine at home, so I couldn't actually try it on a machine. So I had to take it away and um, try it in there to see if it. And it's like, that's actually quite good. <laughs> so, but, you know, it sort of works out all right. And um, so I was just sort of playing around from there. And um, I mean, back then, you know, coffee was blends and blends, and that was it. And, you know, it was, you know, five, six, seven, eight different beans in a blend, and they're all top secret blends that no one else could, could know about and things like that. So. So no one was going to tell you what was in their amazing coffee right. beans. Um, so for me, it was just, I'll just put these together and see what happens and try and, you know, you sort of, I guess you get to know the characters and what beans work together and things like that. So, you know, we sort of tried to roast back then. It was, I guess it was considered light roast. And um, um, compared to all the other sort of really dark, heavy espresso roast blends that everyone had around here that was... Um, I guess the norm at that time and so opening our shop and sort of having this different coffee that we roasted a lot of people were like oh, it's nice but it's not very strong and um, and it was like yeah it's nice but it's not very strong and so because I remember like roasting some Guatemala coffee and using it as an espresso or just even having it by itself because no one did single origins at all back then. It's like, man, this coffee... Like, it was probably my first moment of trying coffee and actually tasting, like, something that's not coffee. Um, so it's sort of... So from there, that was, like... That was my moment of saying, like, coffee is actually more than just dark coffee-flavoured coffee. So... Um, so I guess when we started, like, having two single origins on the shelf next to your blend was, like, unheard of. And... So, so one of my main things was to basically, I don't know, share knowledge or just, you know, broaden people's minds about what coffee can actually be. Like, it's not just a super dark, hugely coffee flavored coffee. So, um, Which, that can be a risky thing. To yeah, totally. Yeah, it was a totally really different. So, if you're doing something different to what everyone else is doing or what they were used to, um, was yeah, it was it was again tricky and um, and then using. Like the Origin Earth sort of started about just before us at the same sort of time, and um, so we yeah basically had a chance to come to right when we opened, and they were starting to looking to somewhere to sell their milk or brewers to use their milk because no one was using it at all. So we're like, oh yeah, I'll give it a go, and it was full fat, which is like a you know, big no-no back then. And oh yeah, oh we don't do trim, so okay, well you know, we don't trim. So um, yeah, so using full fat, you know, lightly processed milk and these light roast things, you know, six years ago was pretty crazy. Um, but we found, like, putting the milk with our coffee, like, made an amazing flavour. And, um, yeah, it was, like, it was it was hard, I guess, to sort of bring people around to the idea that, yeah, coffee doesn't need to be all the same. And, um, you know, if you want to go and have your dark roast coffee, that's fine. You go somewhere else. I'm not, yeah, we're doing this. This is what we're going to do. We're not going to change it. So... You either come or go somewhere else, so it's fine. And, um, yeah, because it's pretty hard eh, to sort of say that to people in a way. Especially when you guys are starting out, you don't want to do people in a way. Well, from yeah. what you've said yeah. so far, I mean, there's a couple of things I've taken from it. Um, one is that you very much listen to what customers want <coughs> over yeah. where you wanted to take the business and yeah. that you just yeah. really wanted to roast for your own cafe yeah. and, and yeah. keep it small. <coughs> Uh, but having someone come in saying, hey, we've got this great yeah. location in yeah. Ariri, yeah. come and have a look at it, yeah. that steered you in another direction. Uh, yeah. The only thing that you you have you know, really stayed true to your own is the coffee itself. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's basically the core of our business really now. And um, so our, our shops are a showcase of our coffee, and that's, that's really all that for. I mean, you've, you've got to make money and you've got to serve people what they want but at the end of the day I mean our coffee has to be outstanding because there's so much competition around the place so yeah if it's not if it's not good if our service is not good if it, anything is sort of off then it's easy for someone to go somewhere else it's, um, it's not a big decision for them um, and I think that's where you've been successful yeah. in changing the market in that there are now uh, places that uh, you can go to everywhere that have that lightly roasted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that where you accidentally end up at a cafe yeah. 
that's still doing the over roasted. Yes, yeah. it doesn't. Feel I mean, that's right. like, yeah, exactly. I mean, everyone has their preference. We we have two blends. We have sort of a darker blend for. I mean, it's really good for sort of milk based uh, drinks as well. Um, but again, yeah, you sort of got to meet the market as well. Um, and we do, yeah. I mean, I guess a big thing for us is the selling of you know roasted beans. So, I mean, I'm still really amazed how many people actually buy beans to take home. And, you know, we sell hundreds and hundreds of bags a week of just, okay, they're probably half of those are sort of single origin coffees. Um, and so I guess for me, it's it's good to see that people actually come back wanting a specific coffee or are happy to try, you know, happy to try different ones and then say, no, I like this one. This is good for me. So so it's really good rather than just sort of people, are, I guess, say to be a bit more virtuous um, and willing to... Yeah, I guess expand that knowledge, I guess, on coffee and sort of what it can be and doesn't have to all be the same. Um, yeah. For those that are yeah. that are um, you know, having their coffee at home, yeah, um, to order those bags of coffee. Now, I've I've been to your, I've tried to go to your website, yeah. firsthandcoffee.com, and and now it's not working. So <laughs> I'm guessing you're not doing online ordering. Yeah, definitely, yet. no, no. It's um yeah, it's always been the plan, and but you know, I guess you know you start and then you know. Yeah, I guess my problem is, is I like to do everything myself, and so it's really hard for me to say to someone, "Can you build your website and do that?" Like I prefer to do it myself. Here, but it takes right, so that's years, on your ten to do years, that. but yeah, yeah. Um, but again, it's we sort of have to weigh out the fact that you know we're a very small business, and we don't want to overcomplicate things. We don't want a huge lot of orders coming in online. We now main our main uh, market is Hawke's Bay at the moment and so you know there's plenty of places where people can buy bags of beans for us um, when I get a lot of people out of town that you know just email me and I just send it off to them so so yeah I mean well, we're, we're going through the process at the moment of sort of seeing what our website is is for and what we want it to be so we've basically come down to that yes we want to sell coffee online but the majority of our website, it's it's about knowledge for people and, and people at home. So that's just as important for us as to sell a bag of coffee. Because there's no point selling coffee, they don't know how to use it, they don't know what it's going to taste like, they don't know anything about it, where it comes from, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, so that's that's huge for us. So it's sort of doing all those things and all that sort of takes time and it's a lot of, it's a lot of research and it's a lot of thought and a lot of work to sort of put all that online so um, yeah it takes time so so you yeah. you you had your fifth birthday back in July yeah yeah what are the biggest lessons over the last five years that you've you've taken away during um, that time I guess yeah I mean I guess weighing up the time weighing up the balance of taking risks and doing yeah, I guess, yeah, taking risks is sort of, you've got to do it, but it's, you've got to be sensible about it, and, um, yeah, I mean, business is, it's hard, but it's, it's actually really, really cool, and it's cool to, you know, share, share that with other, other people, like your staff, and all those sort of things as well, so, um, so for me, it's about being responsible with, you know, our business, you know, we have, you know, 10 employees, so that's 10 lives that you're sort of, looking after and if you muck things up then that's 10 people that are going to find new jobs sort of thing so I mean we're still really small and um, yeah I guess you sort of have that in the back of your mind with everything you do in a way because it's not just you anymore it's sort of there's a lot of people relying on you so that's quite a big responsibility um, at the end of the day um, but I guess for the biggest thing for me is to know what your business stands for, know what you want and really not stray too far from that because everywhere you go, whatever you do, people are always going to say, do this or do this or can you sell this, can you sell this and you know, over at Crazy Good, the amount of people that say, oh, can you sell pies, can you sell all these sort of things and things but um, you're just pleasing like five people but then you know, that slows down all your service, it slows down so much so and it's not really what your business is about. So there's twenty other cafes around that sell sandwiches and stuff. So 
if you want to do that, you go there. That's fine. But it's interesting yeah. you say that because yeah. that's uh, I you know, wrote down before this interview what uh, I thought the three things I like about Crazy Good in the Box are yeah. um, brilliantly fast service any time of day, yeah. dependable coffee, yeah. and the style, the aesthetic. Yeah. You know, there's not full yeah. of posters yeah. and flyers and yeah. business cards and all this. Yeah. So it's very clean. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, again, that's like branding and design is, is huge for me. I'm, I guess I've had, a, I guess, from the landscape design, but I've always been in, into design and architecture and all that sort of thing right from growing up. So so the way things look are very important, even though my wife thinks that <laughs> I'm always so stupid about how things look. But um, again, there's, there's so much competition. So you've got to do, I guess, your aesthetics and your branding and everything has to reflect your business, so it's, um, yeah, so all this, I mean, it's a lot of little details, but it's a lot of work, and it's, um, I mean, you can go, you can go over the top and be really pedantic and look about it, but I guess, yeah, you want your cohesiveness and style to reflect your brand, and vice versa, and all that sort of thing, so, so again, that's when we, we did a bit of a redesign on a, on our cups and bags and a few bits and pieces a year or so ago and um yeah just sort of i guess yeah made that reflect what we stood for and just the simplicity of it and i guess the core nature that coffee is our business and um yeah and again again you're still going to stand out a little bit from the everyone else and so for me it's it's not trying to just copy what everyone else is doing you really got to do your own thing and I guess for some people that's hard because yeah it's just nature of people that it's easy to follow what everyone else is doing but um, but it's harder to not <laughs> it, absolutely yeah. and yeah. Um, I was talking to yeah. someone recently saying that um, you're seeing a lot of he, he called them point and click yeah. hospitality where <coughs> yeah. someone's gone on Pinterest yeah, or, yeah, or gone totally, on the yeah. web and just yeah. point and click yeah. to build their design yeah. um, but it doesn't have any yeah. cool feeling behind it yeah, exactly. And I mean, crazy good when we did it was, you know, white, 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 little bit of thing. And everyone was like, oh, it's white. There's a lot of white in there. And, um, yeah, but, I mean, that's, that's what it's about. Like, it's, your shop is really just a background, a showcase for your product. So you really want your product to stand out, have a really nice retail shelves. And, you know, having things like that, the amount of product that it can sell, like, have that as a focus in your shop, like, it's huge. And, if your coffee machine is a focus, that's what makes you money. Having your counter and your food, that's pretty much all you need. You don't need all the distractions, I guess, around it. Um, and you see that with a lot of cafes that have art all over the walls and things like that. You I mean, you don't need to sell art. That's not... There's art galleries for art, to selling art, so... It's fine if it's a friend of yours or whatever, but... It's not for me, so... It's fine. Yeah. So, I, I, last question, and I, I kind of promised I wasn't going to ask it, but I'm going to. Um... The next five years, our, <coughs> like, have you thought that far ahead? Like, where, when it's the, the 10th birthday for First Hand, um, what will you be celebrating? Will there be more cafes? Will it be the same cafes? <laughs> because you're like, hey, or, um, or are you going to take the same type of approach, approach you had in the last um, five years? Yeah, but I mean, I've always got, I've got plenty of plans. There's so many plans. You've got to filter the, the plans into the sensible ones. And, I knew you'd duck this question. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we've got, yeah. A few things <laughs> in the pipeline, so yeah, I guess yeah, it's hard to know. I mean, I don't. You can't really be too specific about what's coming up. So, I mean, things just happen at the right time with with, uh, with opportunities. So, um, I mean, I'm not actively looking for anything or things come to you. Really, it's, it's what I what I do. So, and if I think there's a need in um, for a specific thing in a specific place, then that's cool. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I could, I, it's, I could think of like twenty good spots for cafes right now, and it's that all be amazing. But yeah, it's, I don't know. There's yeah, there's so many, there's so many things that do and cool things that can happen in Hawke's Bay. It's like it's pretty cool. Here, yeah, like, Hawke's Bay is pretty average when we started. Um, you know, opened up five, six years ago, and I guess cafes were just cafes, and that was it, but I mean, there's so many amazing restaurants and interesting cafes and that now, and that, um, yeah, it's pretty cool to see sort of other people getting, everyone getting into it as well, um, 
it's I guess yeah it's cool to be part of that and sort of help drive yeah drive that as well um, in the industry and space so yeah but I don't know there's always yeah things will come up so you'll see <laughs> Maybe. I'll, I'll have to wait and yeah. see um, well, I think Al that you uh, play a, a, actually a huge part in the community <coughs> um, both with keeping um, people working you know on the commute that they're on the way to work uh, and this is the first part of their day and the first part of your experience of your day can really set the scene for the rest of the day uh, and I think what you've done uh, and I can see why you, you want to expand at the rate you're expanding is because you've actually got a really good thing going on um, so why break it when it's when it's going so well um, and you know I do look forward to seeing uh, which opportunities you say yes to in the future uh, because you've obviously got your head screwed on straight with in terms of cash flow and in terms of <coughs> expanding at the, the right rate. Uh, and you certainly, you know, your ability to hire great talent and keep talent uh, across those 10 employees, you know, they, they all talk about you in a yeah. way where uh, they really appreciate what you've managed to build uh, for them and to just give yeah. them uh, give them latitude to, to be their yeah. own person as well. Well, it's like, I mean, your, your staff are your key to your business and they're the face of your business that everyone sees every day. And so, especially in the hospitality, like, yeah, they're there to serve people. And so, I guess that's where we really, I guess, uh, built our business on. Um, I guess our, our staff, you know, they're all not, probably hardly any of them are hospitality trained or anything like that. They're just people that come in wanting a job. Um, you know, it's easy to teach someone to make coffee, but um, you really got to teach them the, the service skills and those sort of things. Um, but then you also want them to be their own person, and you want them to be to feel a part of your business because, um, yeah, it's nothing worse, I guess, sort of sitting on the outside, just sort of having no choice in decisions or anything like that. So you basically just got to get them to, you know, not do what they want, but you know, just give them a bit of free reign here and there, um, and sort of, yeah, teaching that. It, that this is what our business is built on and I guess it getting them to understand of why we do things, you know, why we make these decisions, why we sell this particular coffee, blah blah blah. Um, and so the, so then they have the knowledge to pass on to customers, not have to ask a set of a second opinion for everything. Um, so they actually know themselves everything that we do in the business is uh is key. So it's um yeah, so they're really really vital way to our business and success I guess well it's, it's certainly worked and as a regular uh, coffee goer both to the box and crazy <coughs> um, I appreciate being able to have great coffee <laughs> particularly during a uh, business meeting cool. um, so hey thanks for your time uh, today to be on the Ryan Marketing Show no worries. and uh, look forward to seeing what you get up to in the future cool sounds good thanks Al cheers thank you If you like this episode, remember to subscribe for free on iTunes. Simply search for The Ryan Marketing Show in the iTunes Store.